Okay, um, so yeah, welcome back. Today we'll be talking about map filter and reduce. Um, it's a topic that has not been that's not covered extensively in lecture. So today, the intention of today's tutorial is indeed to talk more in depth on map filter and reduce. So it's more of a you can say continuation or, or maybe more in depth. So there are five parts to this to this week's tutorial. The first part is the standard question where you just need to figure out what's the output. Second is scale slash square tuples. Uh, we'll just go this very briefly. It's just um, talking about the materials that we talk in lecture. The next is part three is some digit squares. So we have talked about how do we actually calculate the sum of the digits in a number, but then you square the digits up. But but usually we use a for loop. We'll show you. I'll show you how to use a map or a sum. And then I'll show you one more example for one of the Taylor series. And then uh, later during part four, I will be breaking you guys into smaller breakout group groups for you guys to figure out the answer for part four. And lastly, we'll talk about uh, reduce. Reduce will not talk so much about it because it's our, quite an obsolete function already. So without further ado, let's start. Before I start with part map and filter, I would like to uh, do a very brief review on map filter. So um, I'll show you guys something. Uh, please just ignore the header for now. Just ignore the header. This is just an old slide that I made. So um, yeah, we'll be talk. Um, I just want you guys to focus on the vis visuals. Up. So uh, this is an example of a map filter. Uh, this is examples of map and filter, like how they uh, exactly work. So yeah, this is filter, this is map. So I'll show you guys about map first. So map map is very, uh, um, I mean like the the word map itself, meaning that there's like a one to, you know, you use the word map to say like one to one mapping, meaning that you try to map things out that, you know, there's a conversion or how to explain. Actually, let's try to find it. The formal definition of map. So if you can see right, the definition of map is like uh, there's a diagrammatic representation, etc. Ah, this one. Um, map to map means to associate each element of a set with an element of another set, or be associated or with linked to. Yes, uh, this is the definition that we go to. When we talk about mapping, it means that there's an association between two sets. And in this case, uh, this is the association of two sets, uh, where they are actually associated with a function. And the sets are the sequence. Uh. So in this case, what we do is that we want to convert this particular sequence over here into a new function, uh, into a new sequence. And the way we do it is by actually applying the function and basically taking the output of the function as the new sequence. Okay, so in this case, if we have A to K, right, okay, right. If we have A to K, right, then uh, the output, right, this is the input, this is the output, is F A F B F C F D F E F G F H. So for example, if I have an array of one, two, three, and the function is uh, x plus one, hence the up uh, the output will be two, three, four. And there are the these are the pairings. One to two, two to three, three to four. Okay. Some characteristics that you need to understand of a map function is that first map the output, the length of the input is equal to the length of the output. And the second thing is that for the function, right, the function here is quite strict. The function only, only takes in one parameter or 
one input. Not two, not zero, just one. Okay. So that's about map. And uh, next is about function uh, filter. So filter is slightly different. Uh, filter is uh, what we do at, as the function describes. Filter is um, filter will remove any uh, items inside the sequence that does not satisfy our requirement. Hence, I think some uh, characteristics is that sometimes if th this is the input and this is the output, sometimes the length of the output is less than or equals to the length of the input. If in the scenario where all the items in the input satisfy our requirement, which is defined in this function, then basically there's nothing that's getting removed, hence we get the original array. Now, uh, I think maybe some of you may be wondering how does this exactly work? Is that the way it works is that like, it's actually like, first, um, the original input, right? The original input, we'll try to put it inside our function. Um, after we insert it inside our function, then we get the output, right? The output from the function. We get the output of function. After we get the output of the function, we try to evaluate the truth value. When it comes to filter, right, whatever is the output of the function, we will evaluate their truth value. That's why in here, right, we I mentioned like um, it is good to have a Boolean function so that the truth value can be clear. And after we evaluate the truth value. Uh, we know that each item is true, each item is true or false, depending whether they fulfill the requirements or not. And lastly, we will only take the parts that fulfill the actual requirements. Okay. So in this case, um, this is just some random thing where under the function f a, f a b e h and i is true, and the output right will be only be a b h and i. Um, I think another thing to note is that uh, unlike map, unlike unlike map where the output is the product after being inserted in the function, in filter the product is just the original object. The function here only serves to evaluate its truth value. Now, what's interesting here is that um, what happens if usually if it's a uh, Boolean function meaning that in lambda ax is maybe like x equals to 10 or x is less than 3 or x is in sequence. You know, things that, you know, but naturally will return true or false. But what happens if lambda x just returns x and then like the input x, right, is a string. Hence, technically the output is also a string. Remember in our previous tutorials, when we need we need need to actually evaluate the true value of a value that is not boolean the rule is if it's not empty or zero then it's true if it's not empty or zero then it's true empty is if you remember it's basically zero empty string empty list empty tuple empty sets empty dictionaries these are empty and these all will be forced to force evaluated to be false rest the, the rest is true all right um, are there any questions so far if there are no questions maybe just a thumbs up if there's only one thumbs up okay I see two. Is the rest okay or do you guys want to ask questions? Okay, if there are no questions, then uh, uh, this is the somewhat the similar implement. This is more or less the implementation for map and filter. I'll just leave this up for five to 10 seconds. If you want to take a picture or screenshot of this, feel free. 
but I don't think you need. You kind of can create your own function for this. Like you can, now you know how filter works. You kind of can create your own filter function. You don't really need this. Even then later, we'll just use Python's inbuilt filter or map function. Okay. All right. Um, so enough about the refresher on map and filter. Now let's talk about the actual tutorial, which is this. So we'll now attempt part one, where um, we try to do this. Yeah. So we have A, B, C, D, E, and F. So for this exercise, what I'm going to ask you guys to do is just to type out your answer in the Zoom chat. We'll do it one by one. So let's start with A, okay? Um, what is the answer for A? Anyone? Just type, it, type your answers in the Zoom chat. It doesn't have to be perfect, as long as you get the essence of the answer. Um, you're not supposed to use Python. Oh yeah, we'll just assume that you know, you know, we'll just assume that map will actually return a list lah. Uh, we'll be using our own. Okay, we will be using our own version of map. So, in this case, uh, it should more or less look like this. Yeah. Any other answers? Anyone? Okay, so, um, okay, uh, okay, the, it should not produce an error. I'm not so sure why it produces an error. But yeah, the answer is uh, as uh, Fang Kiang writes, it should be true, false, false, true, 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 true. Okay. Okay, and now I understand. Like um, the Python's map, right? Python's map will Python's map. So this is input, right? Sequence, right? Will return a map object. So to actually use this, right? Uh, what you want to do is perhaps do like a list map function sequence. Yeah, you want to do this instead to actually see the output. In this practice, we'll assume that we can see the output already. Uh, okay, now uh, to the actual question. Why is it true, false, false, true, 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 right? See, this is the function, right? So function x is x greater, x greater than 2. And so we'll try to evaluate. So in this case, if we have our original array, 9, 2, 1, 3, 4, 5, 6, We'll try to insert it one by one. F9 is basically 9 greater than 2, which is true. Nine, 2 is not greater than 2, is false, false, true, 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 true. Now remember, this is a map. I think the key here is that this is a map. So it has, first, the length of the original input and output should not be different. So in this case, we'll keep the structure in the same. Oh, is there someone that does not write? Oh, there's someone who cannot see the... Wait, wait, wait. You, can you guys see the writings on my slide? Okay. Or oh, I'm... Okay. Should we wait? I feel bad. <laughs> okay, I'll just like keep on blabbering on part A. So you can read. So, yeah, basically true, false, false, true, true. Because it's map, the length should not be different. What you do is just like convert, just like plug into the function and plug out. So, like in this case, nine, insert the function, and then the output is true. Then you just keep on doing that over and over again. Okay? So, yeah, um, in recap, the answer is true, false, false, true, false. Eh, sorry, true, false, false, true, 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 yes. Now, question B, what's the answer? Question B is actually the same with question A, but this time it's actually filter. 
Anyone? All right, yes, the answer is actually 93456. Uh, we can actually like observe from the previous part where the previous part we have true on this, 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 which is associated with 93456. That's because it's associated with those. We'll just take those into our value. Good. Wonderful. Okay. Next up, we have question C. What's the answer for question C? Anyone for question C? Okay, um, yeah, actually, uh, Andy and Sia Young got it reversed. Um, which Rachel's answer is same as Sia Young, so hmm. okay, good. At least you got the rough idea that. Um, what we want to do is actually we want to convert the numbers into either E or O. But then, how to figure it out? So we kind of can figure out by, by seeing like, we see that the, it's, the function is x modulo 2, right? Then we know if x modulo 2 is usually to check odd, odd and even. So usually if x modulo 2 is 1, it's odd, right? Because like, Three, uh, 3 modulo 2 is 1 and if it's 0 it's even now because it checks like if x modulo 2 right it means that if this is true now the true that this is only true if it's if returns 1 la. so this is the true value this one is false okay hence uh, uh, if it's true, then it will give us O. If it's false, it's going to give us E. It means that if the number is odd, O. If it's even, it's E. And so with that, we can just simply see the list over here and see that, oh, 9 is odd, it's O. 2 is even, E, O, O, E, O, E. Okay? Well done. All right. Okay, now after doing that, the question is question D. What's the answer for question D? Anyone? Does it have the inverted commas though? What do you mean by inverted commas? Ah, oh, oh, the quotations. Ah. Uh, doesn't matter. Lah. Doesn't matter really. Like, uh, you have it, you don't have it, doesn't matter. Like, I mean, like, when you're writing in an exam, you might want to write it to indicate that it's a string, but it's, it doesn't matter. Lah. Okay. What's question D? Ah? What's the answer for question D? So there's, I think earlier, like, uh, did someone say an error? Or oh, Rachel mentioned that it's an error. Anyone else has a different opinion? So 
So it's actually, it doesn't produce an error. I think uh, I'll pull back on my slides here. Okay. Uh, if you see the slides over here, right? Uh, the procedure for filters, you sequence, right? After you have a sequence, you convert it according to the function. And then you evaluate the truth value. And then after seeking the uh, evaluating the truth value, then you pick whichever that is true. Now in this case, right, in this particular case over here, we kind of already map it out. Like this filter, right? We already map out and the map is results is here. It's a string O, string E, string O, string O, string E, string O, string E. Then this is the truth value that we need to evaluate, which is O, E, O, O, E, O, E. I mean, remember, right, anything that is not zero or empty is evaluated as true. Hence, this will be true, 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 true. Hence, everything will be true. Hence, because everything will be true, it means that eventually the filter will take every single thing. Is this clear for everyone? Oh. Interesting. First, what you want to do is evaluate the true value. So then, uh, in this case, right, if we insert 9 to the lambda over here, right, what is the output? The output is O, right? The output will be O. Then what is the true value of O? The true value of O is true because it's not an empty string, okay? Now, because it's true, right, it means that when I... Uh, 9 is inside the filter, it will be included because it satisfies the, it, it is true. Okay. Oh no. Uh. Okay, okay. Uh. Again. Yep, because O and E are all true because earlier at 9, 2, Nine, two, one, three, four, five, six. When you map it, when you do a mapping, right, it will become O E O E O O O E O E, in which this is evaluated as true, 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 true. So then, because it's true, then we take everything. And because we take everything, meaning that the final output should be 9, 2, 1, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Why doesn't it filter O in set? Why would it? Why would it filter O in set only? There's no good argument for that. Because when it's filtered, because remember, right, the if else is only a function inside that returns a string. So if it's it's not an if else that you know separates things, but it's just an if else that decides what's the output. Okay, why the output is not O E O O E? As mentioned before, when we are dealing with filter, uh, the output is the original number. It's just the way it is like uh, when we filter it gives the output of the original uh, item in the list instead of the map the newly mapped function the newly mapped output any other questions All right, then if there's no more questions, then we should just, we should move forward with question E. Anyone with question E? Question E is interesting. You get to combine both math and filter. Anyone with question E?
Node.js map string. Let's start from the inside. Okay. There's true, false, true, true, false, true, false in string form. There's 9135. Any other answers? Oh, okay. Oh, there's even like 9135 that the string is literally everywhere. Okay, so I think uh, I'll just uh, clean my screen a bit. I think when we are dealing with like, you know, nested functions, what we need to do is decompose what's happening. And generally the rule is to go from inside to outside. So in this case, we have an original sequence L original sequence L and it goes through filter right and the filter will actually gives us a new list M and M will then go through map and it will give us a new list which is this is the end output law. so I think we need to do it step by step first is going through the filter first so in this case the filter is X modulo 2 as mentioned, it is true if it's odd. Hence, this filter means that it will filter out all the odd numbers. So from initially 9 to 1, 3, 4, 5, 6, it, the, the leftover is 9, 3, 9, 1, 3, 5. Okay? So we're done with the top part. We can ignore that for now. Now we can focus on the bottom part. 9135 goes to map and the map is string. It means that it converts every single item into a string. Hence the output should be a the output should be a list of the same length, meaning that there should be four components. Hence each component is converted to a string. 9, 1, 3, 5. Hence this is the final answer. 9, 1, 3, 5. All right, so like for example, like Xiong Yun's answer is not, uh, it's not right yet because it's not the string for the entire list, but it's actually a string for each component inside the list. Okay, so it's very important to be able to decompose your nested functions. All right, lastly, question F. Any any takers? Question F. No, it doesn't give true false on for E. No, it doesn't. As you can see, how the process goes uh, from top to bottom. No, it doesn't, Risha. Okay, anyways, any... It's 9, 6, 81, 36, any other answers? Okay, we'll try to decompose again. So in this case, the map is actually inside of the filter. So we'll start with map first. Then end up with filter. So in this case, map, we start with 9, 2, 1, 3, 4, 5, 6. The map will be converted. This is x times x times x me. It's just x square la. x square so the the list in m is should be 81 4 1 9 16 25 and 36 okay I'm, i apologize it's bad filter is if x is greater than 30 so from m we only take the things that are greater than 30 which is 81 not 4 not 1 not 9 not 16 not 35 and 36 okay this is our final list but, and then here, right, you see string, right? You see string here. 
the difference between the previous one is that this thing is inside a map. So then the string is actually applied to every component inside the list. But then in this case, the string is just applied to the entire list. So in this case, what happens is it's just string 81, 36, hence converting it into a string. Okay. So no, it's not like string per thing, but then it just like converts the list into a string in, in, in its entirety. Okay. Are there any questions? Okay, if there are no questions, maybe give it a, give a thumbs up. That's the end of part one. Anyone? Are you guys okay? For question E, the string acts like a lambda. Yes, correct, correct. Correct. You're correct, sir, yeah. Okay, um, then we'll move on to the next part, which is uh, scale and tuples. Uh, let me just share my slides first my slides first. So um, we've talked about how to scale list or square a list inside class, right? In lecture. Right, so when you uh, scale a list, you basically multiply it by a particular n and then if you try to uh, square a list, uh, you try to uh, just like square them. Lah. Okay. So, um, oh, okay. So, uh, just give me a minute. Lah. So this is the function that you were given in class, right? I believe that this is the way you actually scale it. So like you have a sequence and you have the n, and then like for ei in sequence, then you output a pen i times n. So you scale it by n. This is the recursive way. Right, this is the recursive way. Now the question is, this is this takes in a sequence and then the output right will confirm be a list. In this case, a standard list. Now the question is, how would you do with a tuple? So you, you're supposed to be trying it for five minutes, but then like, seriously, I don't think it's worth you guys five minutes. So I'm just gonna change it, show you the answer. So this is what happens. Basically, if you want to do it for tuple, you just need to change the data type into tuples, lah, meaning that you need to start with an empty tuple instead of an empty list. And the way you add it, remember, tuples cannot do a pen, so you need to add it manually. Okay. Um, okay. Are there any questions regarding uh, tutorial question part two? None? Okay, then I'll move forward. It's just this, lah. like, you just need to make sure that uh, the data type is the change to tuple. Sorry. Um, for list, 
Okay, for this, um, depends on the purpose, okay? Um, if you remember that there are some cases where you do not want to change the original list, hence uh, addition is better because uh, every addition will always generate a new list. But then if you can actually modify the original list, a pen is preferable because um, imagine it this way. Lah. Um, uh, yeah, um, that's my pen. If you do a pen, right? If you do a pen, say I have an original list one, two, three, four, five. I want to add a pen six. I can immediately add, uh, modify the original list by just writing six. But then if I add six, right, to my list, I have one, two, three, four, five. What I must do is I need to rewrite this entire list again one, two, three, four, five, and add six. Yeah, it creates a new list, hence it's more, it's longer in terms of time. That's why it really depends on purpose. So next up we have map. Now we're going to the question part three where we actually try to see how it is implemented in real, uh, in real life, not real life, uh, but being implemented. So how do you exactly sum digits, right? If you sum digits, uh, okay, this one is a bit complicated. Uh, basically, if you wanna sum the digits, usually what you most of you would do is actually, you guys just convert the numbers into a list. Lah. I see you guys do that a lot. So you guys can just like do this. One, two, three, four. Uh, list string n. We will just break the string into several parts. Now. Now that we already have a sequence, right, we kind of can map them up so that we can actually get the sum of the square digits. So we can actually square them. So in this case, we try to square them, but then there's an error. Lah. Uh, as you can see, there's a type error here. You cannot multiply sequence by non-integer of type string. So how do you exactly get an integer? How do you get the square of this? Ah? Any ideas? Yes, correct. So you just you just uh, map lambda x integer x and times integer x, and then basically the list string one two three four five six. Okay. So it's a bit like this. Yeah, so basically, uh, you convert it to integer and then because this is, you want a square, so like just make sure you multiply it by itself again or perhaps do it to the power of two. Okay. Yeah, okay, so that's how you do question three. Lah. Generally, if you have a map, right, if you want to do, some, do something map, means that you have an input sequence, then you have an output sequence. Okay, that's your goal. You have an, you need to figure out what's the input sequence and what's the output sequence. Now, in the next function, in the next part, is the Taylor series, in which we are actually trying to figure out um, a Taylor series, we can actually also use it with the map. If you can actually figure out, right? Um, you can see that this is actually somewhat a sequence, right? Because like usually sigma n zero until infinite means that there's uh, n when it's zero, n when it's one, n when it's two, and so on means that we can see that there is a somewhat a natural occurring sequence here from zero to infinite. And then because it's a sigma, then you want to sum them up. Just like our sum digit square. The question is, so this is our, we can try to break down the problem and we can see that there's this natural occurring sequence. Hence earlier we remember we have map right where it needs an input and output sequence. 
Oh, sorry. We can figure out that the input is an array of numbers like this. And then the output should have looked somewhat like this, somewhere in this box, particular box over here. Okay. And to get the values of this, right, we are already provided with a formula here. Okay. So in this case, this is n0, n1, n. This is it's supposed to be n2. So yeah, um, the function in the red rectangle can be represented by uh, lambda. And yeah, you can just simply map the function into this thing. Now to come up with this, you can actually use range. So this is our goal. So uh, we already have the function that is indeed represented as this function. And then we already have our target. This is our formula. Uh, uh, first, we can actually define our uh, function my cost x in this way, where if we want to to count like the cost of x, we can just simply like uh, do a sum map of a function where the function takes in the range from 0 to 10. Because remember, it should be infinite, right? But then we cannot input infinite in Python. So in this case, we'll just use 10. And in this case, um, the value of x earlier will be inserted in the calculation somewhere. Ah, it's here. Wait, that's actually right. And the n here will go through this particular list over here. So in this case, uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 will be mapped accordingly to the function that has been defined. Into F0, F1, F2, F3, F4, F5. Okay. So this is how it more or less works. Lah. So to actually see it in action, you, yeah, you can see this. Lah. Now, this is uh, my cost x. So uh, I'll take a screenshot of this. And I'll send it to the group. Now, your task is, uh, what, what's going to happen after this is gonna, that I'm going to, now that you have learned how to actually come up with, sorry, um, oh, right. come up with the answers value of the sin, sin x, cos x, tan x, second x, arc sin x, and etc. You kind of can technically also find, uh, you can, sorry, sorry, uh, now that you understand how to actually create a function to approximate the value of cos x using the Taylor series, I believe that you guys are able to also convert the other Taylor series to a uh, mapping function as well. So um, I have prepared a code share here for you guys to uh, fill up. I'm going to break you guys into different breakout groups. So I'm going to send, send this function. Later in the breakout groups, uh, we will have, a, there will be the name of the function that you need to create. Okay. Let me just do it a bit. Just 
just give me a little bit time to assign you guys to different breakout rooms. Okay, so I'll give you guys two minutes, uh, around like five minutes, so actually five to ten minutes to try to convert this uh, daily series into uh, the functions, to the earlier function like the cos x function. Um, if you're done, just share it in code share with it, which I've shared in the Zoom chat. All right. Okay, uh, welcome back everyone. Um, uh, can you guys see my screen? Yes, you guys can see my screen. Okay. Um, let's see what you guys got. Um, where's my Akhtan people? We have, we should have, technically we should have two functions for each. We should have two for sine, two for arc sine and Two for Akhtan. Um, anyone from Akhtan doing their task? No. Okay. Oh, nice. We have two for Akhtan, which is good. Uh, yeah, is it? Anyone from Akhtan, uh, Kelin, uh, Rifaya, Marcus, Leecher, Samuel, anyone? Ah, uh, oh well. Um, oh, you put already, yeah. Hmm. I cannot find it though. Which one is Akhtan? Uh, okay, wait, Chow. Out of curiosity, how do you write for the base? What do you mean base? Uh? What do you exactly mean by base? Ah, uh, that one, I'm not so sure. That's why I skipped that, actually. I'm, I'm also not so sure. I'm not a math whiz. So that's why I didn't put anyone in Tan or Sec. I didn't assign Tan or Sekan at all. Yeah, guys, I'm a C. I'm teaching CS, not this. Okay, so yeah, okay. Thanks, everyone. Um, yeah, if, okay. So I think at least you get through this exercise. Really, like, I don't think you. I can criticize a lot because it's quite straightforward. So as long as you can understand how how does your function work, I think that's okay. So basically your x here will create a new function lambda here because technically this lambda will be replaced by the x above so it's cut higher order function already and then like later this one right will map the series from 0 to infinite or in this case 0 to 10 and map it accordingly to this function over here so i think sine is okay that definitely there's different in, in styling arc sine is okay one prefers lambda and the other prefers um a traditional function arc done also eq yep minus one power n to okay two times n plus one x to the power of two n plus one all right i think uh everyone got it i think you guys are doing a fantastic job on this thank you so much for participating i do hope that you guys also learn from the experience of writing these kinds of code because the only way to learn is actually to write natural code. Yeah. 
calories. Okay. So if you want to save it, save it. But I don't think you need to save it because technically this is enough for you guys to come up with your own code. Okay. So I think we've seen uh, how uh, mapping is being used in, uh, we can see the application of mapping. There, in fact, there's more application. Basically anything that, that you know, requires iteration for a sequence, you can, uh, can do it by using mapping. So remember burger price, right? This was our function for burger price where we iterate through the burger and try to add up the price for one by one. I mean, imagine what if we can use map, you know, like we just map each ingredient with its corresponding price and then just sum them up. In fact, in fact, this was one of, this was usually the one of the earlier ideas, remember, when we went through the tutorial and we tried to generate ideas on how to actually sum this up. Some of you actually mentioned like, oh, we should convert the price of each ingredient to the, we should convert the ingredient to the price one by one for each ingredient item. That is the purpose of map, where uh, you can actually convert the ingredient to its price. And yeah, as mentioned, intuitively, these are actually a function. Because we are mapping, right, for B is 0 to 5, C is 0 to 8, P is 1.5, V is 0 0.7. So because this is a mapping on itself, we kind of can create a function here, def price, where if it's char B written 0 0.5, char C 0 0.8. So here there is a one-to-one -one mapping between the ingredient and the price. So then the easy way to sum the price up is simply just like to do a burger price M sum map price burger. So here in this case, this map right, will convert the each ingredient inside the burger to its price using this price function. Now, as mentioned, why there is no need to convert the shrink burger into a list first, because remember, uh, because maps, right, they can be simply map anything that is in the form of a sequence, and a burger is a sequence. Hence, you can actually map the characters of each ingredient inside the burger into something else. We will need two def, right? Uh, yeah, in this case, oh, uh, do you need two two def? Uh, we'll show you later. So this is the version two, where we use a dictionary, much shorter, right? Much more beautiful. Uh, where we just return the price dictionary chart, and so the burger price m function stays the same. Now, when do we need two defs? The answer is no. You can actually do it this way. You can, in fact, just simply insert the dictionary into, insert the function as a lambda inside the burger price M. So it produces just like one line function for burger price. So indeed, like sometimes just combining some things together looks more elegant and more intuitive, but at a certain point, it can actually be a disaster. So now I'm going to talk about one line function so, okay, one line function is not really a thing, but it's just uh, something that we use to describe a very specific, special type of function where the function is like this, like, like def function name inputs, and then it just gives us an immediate return statement. So, it's a cool thing. For example, to fo the following one liner returns the longest word in a text with the command commas and periods. So in this case, this particular function, right, it's a one-liner function and it is able to give us which of the following words inside this text is actually the longest. However, there's some downfalls to one-liner functions. Is that sometimes uh, one-liner functions can get too complicated, hence it becomes unreadable and it also introduces bugs. So in this case, if you see right here in this particular function that you don't really have to understand, it is not intuitive right, to understand like how does this actually work like it works yeah it does works but then in a glance you cannot really understand what's going on so sometimes maybe it's better to actually split it into several sentences instead of one one liner yes beauty is important but then uh, it should be easy to understand as well and it also oftentimes re introduces new bugs because Usually these kinds of things assumes that the input is perfect, which in some cases it's not. And especially you guys, you guys often uh, 
make assumptions that does not exist about the question. So um, for this, right, whether you want to do a one-liner function or not, like you just create one line function like this or not, it's up to your discretion. It really depends whether it helps you or not. But if it, if it does help you, good for you. If it doesn't help you, don't force it. It's just beautiful to see, but there's no really good reason to use it and except for brevity and readability. Um, the, what's the X behind? Oh, um, that's calling the dictionary. Remember, this is a dictionary, right? the curly brackets. This is a dictionary. And uh, the square brackets is to call the key to the dictionary. Okay. So, any questions regarding one line functions and I don't know, mappings or anything? Before we go to the last part, if tuple, uh, you mean this one, is it? This one? Uh, no, no, no. It's a diction. No, this is a dictionary, ma. This, the brackets X here is to access the dictionary. This is not a list. The brackets here is not a list. This one is the thing that to use to access a list, a tuple, or a dictionary. Yes, index. Okay. So lastly is reduce. Uh, reduce is quite obsolete, so we'll just go through it fast. Um, so this is reduce. This is the function. So what reduce does is actually it tries to take in the first two uh, function, uh, the first two um, member of a sequence, and then just like combine them. And after combining them, you take one more combine, 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 combine. So in the case of question, uh, in the case of five here, right? You take the first I two items. In this case, the function is plus, so like 1 plus 2 is 3, 3 plus 3 is 6, 6 plus 4 is 10. That's how reduce does. What reduce does is from a huge function, you just condense it into one number. Okay? So if it's f is the addition function, you do this. Okay. So this is a... This is an example of the summation function. We can also do a uh, multiplication. You can also do multiplication. Now, if you want to do multiplication using reduce, any ideas? What should I change from this particular part so that I can change it to multiplication? <laughs> any answers in Zoom? Chat, please. Yep, you just need to multiply it. Okay. Okay, so you just get a multiplication. Okay. Not that hard. So a little bit of history of reduce is that um, it was a built-in function in Python. But around 2016, reduce was moved to a package called functos. Usually the ones in package functos are old functions that were extensively used but no longer used anymore. Um, the reason was because that, uh, you know, reduce itself is doesn't really have much application, like, except, you know, like just like summing everything up or multiplying everything up, you know, because like sometimes when you just want to condense the value of a list into one singular value, it you cannot just like represent it as a single lambda. Like, there's a lot of computational process behind it. And once you do that, reduce is not really effective anymore. If you want to just do plus, right, you can use sum. Yeah. So there are also other two uh, functions that were also in func tools, which is any and all. And if you remember, any, right, uh, for any, it's basically any takes in, in any takes in a sequence, right? 
and then what it does is evaluates the true value of each item and if there's at least one true returns true as Fang Kiang mentioned any is actually the or gate so in this case it's basically the same as having multiple sequences and having or in between okay so in this case uh it's very english ish in this case if l one two three four is there any number that is greater than three which is yeah there's four so it should be true if one two three four is there any number that is greater than nine in l which is false because there's no numbers that are greater than l is there any prime numbers in the list well you simply just use it is prime for x in that and yeah, it gives you all is somewhat the opposite all as fam kyang mentioned is the end gate so you have several statements you just end it all together meaning that you just did one bad apple inside the sequence one false and the entire statement will be false okay so in this term right for l like if l are all numbers greater than then three, um, it's not, but all numbers are indeed greater than zero. Are all the numbers in the list are prime numbers? Well, it depends, okay? Okay. Um, yeah. Um, so there are many more one-liner question, one-liners that, you know, just for your reflection, we have like, you can, you can check palindrome in one line, you can print out a file in one line, you can do factorials in one line. So uh, those are the things that, uh, some samples of one line less. And hence, that's the end of today's tutorial. Um, any questions, please don't go first. Uh, just, are there any questions? I got an announcement after this. Do you guys have any questions regarding today's tutorial? If there are no questions, uh, maybe can I get a thumbs up? Reduce must import func tools. Yes, reduce must import func tools. Okay, then uh, I would like to bring your attention to this. Oops, my bad. So um, the call, for those of you who, have, who doesn't know yet, uh, we have a midterm survey, which you can find under the survey column inside uh, the, your cosmology platform, where there you can find your midterm survey and fill it up. So technically, you, have st you still have like 14 more minutes in this tutorial. And I do hope that you guys can use this 14 minutes to answer the midterm survey before you guys forget. Because in the midterm survey, you get you also get to give me feedback. So uh, you know, this module really relies on the importance of surveys on the feedback of students. Uh, we are on our third iteration. We are getting better every iteration. But then we know that there's still a lot of things that can be done, and we really want to hear your voice in making this module a better course. So please try to fill it up. If you guys really want to write hearty sentences, yeah, I don't expect you guys to finish now. You guys can press save, but if you guys like, uh, okay, I want to fill feedback. I think 15 minutes is enough to fill all this. So you guys can use the 15 minutes now to finish your midterm survey. I know some of you have finished your midterm survey, so it's okay. So if you guys are done, feel free to leave the tutorial room. I'll be staying until 1.30 to field any questions that you guys have regarding today's tutorials. Uh, for those of you who just want to stay around, feel free to stay around. And the rest, please, 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 please try to do the midterm survey. Okay, I'll stop the recording now.